Every time, every time, I am just a teensy bit late. Two days ago, I was like, maybe, maybe tomorrow's the day, because there's no way they're that far into production right now, right? And then the trailer drops yesterday. I, I, I am Steve. Does this background look a little bare to you guys? With that settled, let's talk about the Minecraft movie. This video will not be about the trailer that came out. This is going to be purely my pre-write of the movie that I made before the trailer came out. And we're going to talk about what my dream vision for a Minecraft movie would look like. Let's get one thing straight. The themes of a Minecraft movie. How do you adapt this video game into a movie even? Well, I think there's a few distinct emotions that players often feel when playing this game. To make this as encapsulating of an experience for all Minecraft players as possible, Possible, these are things you would need to get right, in my opinion. A Minecraft movie would need to explore the themes of loneliness, existentialism, and joy in the simple things. Very often you get lost in this expanse of a world in-game, and you do feel lonely. You're the only creative creature in this place, and as an extent of that you feel the existentialism of an infinitely generated world and what else could be out there. And from these things stems the joys of your own creation, the joy in the simple things. For a Minecraft movie to work for me, I think those would be the themes that I would like to see explored. Because ultimately, the reason why video game movie adaptations fail is because they don't adapt <laughs> the video game. They just want to tell a story with these characters and in this world. But I can't overstate this enough. The story isn't in Minecraft. Minecraft is the story. That's where other aspects of this movie come in, such as genre. The genres I decided on for Minecraft are drama, action-adventure, and fantasy. Fantasy and action-adventure are pretty obvious, you know, if you've played through Minecraft. But drama? What's that supposed to look like? How is, how is Steve supposed to experience drama in a Minecraft story? Well, we'll get to that. The last hard rules I had for this pre-write of the film were as follows. This would be a silent film, so no words would be spoken from our main character, Steve. Oh, Steve would be the main character. I don't know if I made that clear. I wrote this back when Jason Momoa was the only confirmed cast for this movie. <laughs> so I thought it was gonna be a solo movie with Jason Momoa as Steve, and then we got this guy. <laughs> the story would also be somewhat episodic. There would be chunks of the Minecraft movie where Steve is accomplishing something or discovering things in sections all building up to the finale. But with those hard rules established, let's get right into it. Steve spawns into a plains biome, an oak forest nearby, and massive mountains and hills in the distance. There's a few cows, sheep, and chickens wandering the field. Confused, Steve walks toward the forest through a few flowers. Cornflowers, poppies, ox eyes, etc. He picks a dandelion in one hand and a lily of the valley in the other. His eyes wander between the two. Then he crushes the dandelion in his hand. When he opens it, there's a handful of small seeds in his palm. He examines them, then sees a chicken cluck in front of him in his peripheral vision. He looks at the chicken, then the seeds in his hand, then at the chicken. He tosses some seeds to the chicken, who becocks in excitement, pecking at the grass to pick them up. A smile slowly forms on Steve's face. He then hears another cluck behind him, and turning around, there's two more chickens. He then sees a few more walk up to him, eyeing the seeds in his hand. Steve begins speed walking away as dozens of chickens follow behind him. He tosses the seeds over his shoulder and the chickens stop to peck at them. Leaning against a tree, Steve sighs as he watches the chickens. He subconsciously rubs his stomach, then looks at the tree. Steve pauses, then sends a left jab into the tree trunk, then a right jab. After a bit of punching, Steve grabs the tree trunk with both hands and tears it out of the rest of the tree. Stumbling backwards, Steve looks up, expecting the tree to fall, but it doesn't. The top half of the tree floats above the stump undisturbed. Wide-eyed, Steve shrugs it off. He looks at the log in his hands quizzically, then reaches for his back pocket and pulls out a small green pocket journal, the crafting guide. He sees planks can be turned into a crafting bench, so he begins tearing away at the wood viciously. Then a little musical chime signifies his victory when the bench is complete. After that, he goes back to the tree, punching down the rest. After getting every last log, he turns around and begins crafting. Steve makes a wooden sword and pickaxe. Afterward, he turns to the small group of chickens with his sword cheekily, ready to slaughter his first meal, 
when an apple falls on his head. He looks up, and the leaves begin to disappear. Confused, he picks up the apple and takes a few bites, eating it. Steve is satisfied. This being an episodic story, I would want the act structure of the movie to kind of revolve around the accomplishments Steve is trying to achieve in each act. Act one would take place in the overworld. Act two would revolve around the nether. Act three would revolve around Steve's journey to the end. So in this first scene, I want to establish Steve as an adventurer, but we leave it ambiguous as to who Steve is as a character, letting the audience get to know Steve as he gets to know this world. The first night should be terrifying, showcasing the horror of zombies, skeletons, and spiders. Emphasis on an encounter with an Enderman. That'll be important later. Steve does find a ruined portal, though, in awe of what it could be. He pulls out flint and steel, a gold shovel, and a golden helmet from the chest, putting it on, and inevitably spending his first night dug in a hole. I want to help represent what a lot of people experience when playing Minecraft for the first time. So there's a lot of moments like that throughout my script here. After a few days, Steve is in a cave mining for iron. He encounters a few spiders, zombies, and skeletons. Nothing major, he takes them out with a bow that he crafted. Steve discovers a geode, a glowberry cave, stalagmites and stalactites, and a mine shaft. After wandering the wonders of the underground structure, experiencing the curiosity as to where it came from, Steve hears a hiss. Not the hiss of a spider, but something different altogether. A horror-esque scene of Steve looking over his shoulder and rounding cave corners ensues as Steve gets small glimpses of an ungodly creature. A few minutes of tension eventually culminate in the rounding of a corner, coming face to face with a creeper. Steve's eyes widen as the creeper begins to ignite. Steve turns to run the other way, but there's a hole behind him. The creeper explodes, pushing him into it. Steve is badly damaged, landing in a cobweb at the bottom of the hole, which is in the middle of a clearing. Groaning, Steve pulls out a torch, which lights the face of a zombie. Steve barely punches it out of range before an arrow lands in his back. Skeletons come through an opening behind him as he pulls out his sword. Steve cuts away at the cobwebs, beginning a dash immediately once he's free. Spiders chase his heels and zombies groan not too far behind. Steve scarfs down some pork before slashing at a zombie closing in. He's cornered in a cavern, terrified, fighting off monsters as best he can when another arrow strikes his back. Then a zombie breaks the gold helmet off his head, then another arrow strikes his shoulder. Steve's vision becomes hazy as he falls face first to the ground, well and truly dead. The screen goes black for a few moments, but then we hear a faint voice as stars materialize in the blackness. Steve was slain. I like this player. Another voice responds as the music swells. What did this player dream? Suddenly, the music cuts, and Steve opens his eyes, scared. He's back where he started, in the plains. I want to establish these narrators of sorts that pop in every time Steve dies. I'm calling them the deities. But these are the voices we see at the end of the game in Minecraft's end credits. The green and blue text boxes that establish the mystery behind the end poem. Because we never get to hear Steve talk, I thought it might be fun to have these deities kind of communicate the themes of the story to us little by little. So we only get a little chunk of them here when Steve dies, but we'll hear more from them later. Throughout the episodic story, we get to see all kinds of things Steve achieves, like getting full iron armor, taming his first dog. I also want Steve to discover a desert, where he gets to explore a village and get to know villagers, but he also finds a desert temple. At this desert temple, he gets to see the sandstone carvings of the faces of creepers, monsters of legend. This is a little bit of a retcon to the game, but I also want Steve to see etchings of portals and dragons in the end island to foreshadow further what Steve's fate is ultimately going to lead to. We see Steve take a liking to his spawn point and build a house in the plains biome, also making a chicken coop. But one day out of curiosity, Steve goes back to that ruined portal. He checks the chest once more, finding some obsidian, enough to complete the portal. And after a moment of not realizing what to do, once the portal frame is complete, he remembers the flint and steel he got from the chest. He ignites the flint and steel, the portal lighting up in a cacophony of purple swirls and ethereal rushes. Steve's eyes widen as he tosses a potato into the portal. He peeks around to the other end, seeing nothing on the other side. Steve takes a deep breath, psychs himself up, and steps through the portal. Steve steps on the ground with a squish as the rest of his body materializes in a crimson wasteland. Steve's eyes widen as he examines the terrain. Massive pillars of basalt, 
trickling lava falls and blood-red forests silhouetting the landscape. The roof has massive generations of netherrack stalactites, while the island of netherrack he stands on is coated with soul sand. A couple massive white ghoulish creatures float among the skies, letting out blood-curdling cries to go along with the crackling of flames and popping of lava pools nearby, filling Steve's ears. Steve has discovered the nether. Before he has time to decide on his next move, Steve hears a snort. He looks behind his portal, and with their backs turned to him, three piglins turn around slowly, groaning deep oinks and wielding crossbows and golden swords. Steve takes a step back in shock, then the piglins ready their weapons. A chase sequence ensues, leading Steve into a warped forest. Steve takes out the piglins one by one, a few more joining the chase along the way. As he rounds a tree, he comes face to face with a hoglin. He looks down at a baby hoglin standing next to the adult. The hoglin snarls, smacking Steve off a ledge. Steve falls frantically, dropping his hay bale he was pulling out. The wheat from the hay bale disperses and leaves a trail above him as he prepares for impact, but he's caught by a tangle of vines from the warped cyan trees. He hangs above a few piglins who pull out their swords, but then the group is attacked by another hoglin, and they engage in combat, leading away from Steve. He takes a deep breath, eats, and cuts himself down. Once he regains his composure, Steve notices an enderman in the distance, then another enderman, then an enderman even closer to his right. This place is not as it seems. A sequence of Steve traversing the nether ensues, running out of food and finding mushrooms for stew. He learns how to kill a hoglin for pork, he breaks his pickaxe, and he meets a strider, learning that it likes the warped mushrooms. And he realizes he doesn't know where his portal is, and he's lost. Eventually, Steve finds a bastion. A tense scene ensues where he's bridging over to it, above a massive lake of lava, but he slips. Steve is terrified, nothing he can do to prevent his fall into the lava below. He lands with a massive splash, then we cut to black. Another foreshadowing of the deities, then Steve awakens in his bed back home, like it was all a bad dream. Steve takes a break from the nether, regaining his iron and finding his first few diamonds. Getting his weapons, fishing for food, and building more pens for cows, sheep, and of course, pigs. He finally gains the courage to re-enter the nether. Steve leaves a cobblestone pillar trail this time, finding the ledge he fell off of and hay bale clutching to get down. Retracing his steps back to the bridge and picking mushrooms along the way. He stands at the foot of his bridge and looks down at the lava below. He takes a deep breath and tries to keep going. He gets a few blocks closer, but then hears a familiar cry. The silhouette of a gas floats behind Steve as he turns, and the gas opens its eyes and mouth, letting out a scream. Steve dashes back to the base of his bridge as the gas blows up the bridge behind him, almost reaching the end, but then the gas blows up the bridge ahead of him. Steve can't stop his momentum in time and begins to fall. He starts panicking once again, but then notices a strider walking below him. He leans to it midair, landing on it just in time. He pulls out a warped mushroom that he picked from earlier and hooks it to his fishing pole as fireballs land in the lava close to him, splashing him a little and damaging him. He leads the strider with his fishing pole, running from and narrowly dodging the gas when he finally enters a tunnel at the base of the bastion. Steve breathes a sigh of relief, eating his fish and looking forward to the light at the end of the short tunnel. Once he enters, he sees a marvel of black stone architecture and gold intermixed into a medieval looking base, surrounding the center pool of lava, thriving with piglins and piglin brutes. He notices some chests on a center island and exits the strider to take a look inside. A wide, surprised smile spreads across his face as he pulls out a crimson music disc from one of the chests and a potion of fire resistance from another. Steve opens a third chest and marvels at a pair of enchanted diamond boots. As he puts them on, he hears a horn sound and he looks up. Piglin archers begin loading their crossbows and brutes rush down the stairs to reach Steve. He quickly builds a wall, blocking a few arrows from one side and then blocks some from the other side with his shield. Steve looks back for his strider who has wandered back through the tunnel at good ways. He thinks, then pulls out the fire resistance potion. He chugs it, closes his eyes and charges off the island into the lava. Steve opens one eye, seeing nothing but a thick orange, but he's unscathed. Steve begins swimming and swimming and swimming. He swims as far as he can, eventually bumping into an object of some sort that extends above and below him. Steve places blocks underneath himself, building up and out of the lava, and sees that he's building up against a pillar made out of dark red bricks. He builds up, climbing onto the bridge. 
Steve has entered the Nether Fortress. Steve battles wither skeletons, discovers more chest loot, having to empty his pockets of less valuable items, and stumbles upon a blaze spot. After a heated battle, Steve collects some blaze powder, marveling at its sparkle and wondering what it could be used for. He collects as much as he can and exits the fortress by the skin of his teeth, learning his enchanted boots have soul speed as he escapes. Steve runs out of food on the way back to his portal, slaying a few piglins and skeletons that oppose him on the way back. A montage of Steve building a bigger house, a barn, and a statue of his dog ensues. Steve also collects more diamonds and emeralds, trading with villagers for cool items. One night, as Steve is building a storage shed, a creeper sneaks up on him and his dog. He barely raises his shield in time before, boom! Items spill out all over and his shed is half ruined. Steve checks on and feeds his dog, but then notices some blaze powder spilt on an ender pearl. The ender pearl glimmers and the powder dissolves, slowly changing the shade of the pearl like a crystal ball. A journey ensues where Steve scrapes together what he can to make more ender eyes, throwing them and following their path in wonder with his dog. Along the way, he comes across pillagers whom he attempts to trade with, but instead they fight. Steve makes it out half beat, the pillagers shouting at him from behind, but he still follows his eyes. Eventually, his last one breaks in a swamp. Defeated, Steve shears a few sheep and chops down a tree. As the sun sets, he builds a carpeted area with some torches and decor for his dog. He tosses the dog some meat and places the rest of his belongings in a chest. He gestures for the dog to sit, so it sits. Steve pets his dog and walks away. As the sun sets, he finds a nearby ravine, closing his eyes and jumping in. Steve fell from a high place. Everything you need is within you, a voice says. Another voice chimes in. You. You are alive. As the second voice fades out, Steve awakens in the plains once again. Steve prepares hard for the journey ahead, crafting more eyes and diamond armor as he brews potions. He grabs blocks and food and heads back out. As he follows his trail once again, Steve comes across the pillager outpost, this time noticing an iron golem caged by the pillagers. He walks in, slaying the first pillager easily and taking his crossbow. He arms the bow and begins battle. After a bit of tussling, Steve goes for the cage axing down the wooden barrier, and the golem growls. Steve and the golem make quick work of the rest of the pillagers, as the last few disappear into puffs of smoky particles, leaving Steve and the iron golem to look at each other. The iron golem holds out a rose for Steve, and he takes it, smiling. The golem retreats into the woods, and Steve continues onward. That night, he finds his dog once again sitting right where he left it, and the dog is delighted to see him. Their reunion is broken up by the giggle of a witch nearby. <laughs> who chases Steve and his dog up a mountain with a few skeletons, zombies, and a chicken jockey. After getting the upper hand and bowing down most of the enemies, Steve and his dog team up on the witch, who dies at the peak of the mountain. Steve takes a deep breath and pets his dog as the sun begins to rise. He pulls out another eye and tosses it over the edge. It begins to float and glimmer in the sunlight, but then it flies straight down. Steve is confused. He and his dog head straight down, passing through a mine shaft and a geode, until finally, Steve hits brick. Steve enters the stronghold, amazed at the structure. He finds old fountains and chests and a full-on ancient library. But the most marvelous discovery came when he was surprise attacked by a few silverfish. While mostly harmless, they crawl from the cracks in the brick and moss and bite Steve, who turns a corner with his back facing the entrance of the room finding a cistern of lava on either side of him and breaking one of the blocks to burn the pests. After turning around, though, Steve sees it. In all its glory, the end portal. An eye or two lay within the slots around the ring, prompting Steve to pull out his remaining few and fill the frame. Once the last slot is filled in, a boom of thunder can be heard outside. Steve's eyes widen as the empty space inside the ring quickly and mystically fills with a black void. Materializing within are hues of light, looking like shining stars, filling a night sky. But this is far deeper than something that simple. It's like looking into the deepest depths of the galaxy and forgetting the world around you, mesmerized by the beauty of a sight like this merely existing. Steve sits his dog once again, also laying a bed down as to set a spawn point, empties any useless items into a chest, and jumps into eternity. How does one encapsulate the feeling of the final battle of Minecraft in a film? 
You need to capture every emotion in a final battle like this. But you also need to bring the character of Steve to the emotional resolution of his arc. The same emotional resolution every Minecraft player will feel when they defeat the Ender Dragon. So of course an epic dragon battle will ensue, utilizing all of the things Steve has learned up until this point, clutches and potions and avoiding fireballs. <laughs> but the resolution is more important. Steve, after a grueling battle with the dragon, finally shoots a last soaring arrow into its chest. Hues of light spill out of the dragon's body, the scales dissolving into a crescendo of indigo brilliance, just as the last of its mighty body dissolves and the light fills the sky, it explodes into purple particles. Steve hears a warping noise as the exit portal materializes into that same beautiful void. He approaches that exit portal as it whispers to him inaudibly. He closes his eyes one more time and steps in. I see the person you mean. Steve? Yes. He has reached a higher level. How much does he know? Does he know that we love him? That the universe is kind? He knows the story. Once upon a time, there was a person. A person who awoke into a world that was soft, warm, and simple. Sometimes hard, cold, and complicated, but the person was spoken to by the light. And the universe said, you are the daylight. You are the night. The darkness you fight is within you, and the light you seek is within you. And the universe said, you are stronger than you know. And the universe said, I love you because you are love. And the universe said, you are not alone. And Steve's journey was over. And he woke up from the dream to start a new journey. You are the person. Minecraft is so cool, man. <laughs> Before we wrap this up, I do want to go over an idea of an end credit scene I had that I think is, oh, it just gives me chills. It's so awesome. An insertion point blinks on screen and begins typing in the Minecraft font. Alex has joined the game. If you guys want to see a pre-write based on this skit of a sequel that could happen, potentially, I would I would love to do that. Just, just let me know. <laughs> With that, thank you guys for watching and enjoying my pre-write. I'm still going to watch the Minecraft movie. I'm going to watch it for Jack Black. I, I am Steve. Steve. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just going to add in. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys some other time. So we back in the mine, got my pickaxe swinging from side to side, 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 to side, bam, 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 from left to right, left, 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 baby tonight. The creeper's gonna steal our stuff again, stuff again.